Hello guys, this is Ravi. Today we are going to cover a topic named as passive microwave devices. So first of all, what is passive? Passive means a component which are not able to amplify the signals that are the passive components. And microwave, microwave means uh, the device which works on the microwave frequencies. Uh, microwave uh, basically means the wavelength having length of in microns. Uh, like uh, 30 centimeter to 1 mm uh, basically the microwave having frequency range of 1 gigahertz to 300 gigahertz but uh, now the current scenario the uh, new guidelines the microwave frequencies ranges from 1 gigahertz to up to 10 to the power 6 gigahertz uh, so uh, now come to the topic uh, what is microwave networks basically uh, what is microwave network? Microwave network is a, a combination of the network which consists of my, uh, various microwave several devices such as source, attenuator, resonator, uh, filter, amplifier uh, are coupled together by the transmission line or the waveguide uh, for the desire, uh, transmission of uh, microwave signals that are the microwave networks. There are two types of uh, ports. Uh, one port is for the low frequency network and another, another for the microwave frequency network. Basically, low frequency network can be represented uh, uh, in the two port networks and characterized by their properties or the parameters such as impedance, uh, admittances, voltage gain, current gain and all these parameters uh, relate their total voltage and current at the two ports. Uh, while uh, for the microwave frequency network, it depends on the power uh, gathered at uh, any port with respect to its input. Uh, at the microwave frequencies, the logical variables used are the traveling waves with their associated powers uh, rather than total voltage and total currents uh, as compared to the low frequency network. Uh, uh, from this uh, slide uh, we can see for the low frequency network a port is a pair of terminals whereas for the microwave frequency mic microwave network a port is a reference plane transverse to the length of the microwave transmission line when uh, two or more microwave devices are connected then it can uh, it is known as uh, junction uh, these are the commonly used junction that we have uh, going through in this uh, lecture e plane t h plane t magic tree hybrid ring directional rubber and circulator the corresponding uh, figure has been shown in the right side of this uh, ppt now network parameters uh, z parameter h parameter y and abc parameters are used for the analysis for the circuit at lower frequency but as the frequency increases the wavelength decreases so uh, thus the wavelength of the of the signal is comparable to the components that's why we cannot use these parameters for the higher frequencies uh, so the voltage and current are not uh, well defined at a given point for the microwave circuits uh, at the higher frequencies, that's why we are not uh, uh, using the lumped parameter method. We are using the distributive parameter uh, for the analysis purpose. If we elaborate this point, uh, uh, at the lower frequencies, the circuit can be represented by the two port networks and uh, characterized by their parameters such as impedances, admittances, voltage gain, current gain. And all these parameters relate total voltage and current at this port. But as the frequency increases, uh, the measurement involves the magnitude and the phase of the wave traveling in any given direction uh, or we can find the standing wave. So that's why uh, equivalent voltage, current uh, and, and the related impedance and admittances matrix uh, becomes an abstraction when dealing with the high frequencies network. Uh, so if the frequencies are in the microwave range, however, the H, Y and Z parameters cannot be measured for the following reasons. These are the three reasons uh, for which the these 
parameters these uh, h y z parameters cannot be used at the microwave frequencies first reason is uh, that uh, uh, equipment is not readily available to measure the total voltage and total current at the ports of network we cannot measure the actual total voltage and the current at a port of the network uh, next point is that uh, short circuit and the open circuits are difficult to achieve at the higher frequencies or at the broadband frequencies uh, active devices such as power transistor tunnel diodes are frequently not have a stability at the short circuit and the open circuit so that's why uh, we cannot use h y z parameters at the higher frequencies uh, at the microwave frequencies uh, we have a logical vari variables uh, used are the traveling waves with the associated power rather than the total voltage or currents so these logical variables are called as s parameters uh, now the two port network had be, has been shown in the figure in the two port network there are two variables a1 b1 and in the port 2 is variable a2 and v2 where a1 represents the incident wave at the port 1 and the b1 represents the reflected wave at the port 1 while a2 represents the incident wave at port 1 and uh, b2 represents the reflected wave at the port 2 uh, now uh, there is a scattering matrix a scattering matrix and the scattering matrix is con it consists of a subscript uh, like uh, we have seen this uh, one s12 in the s12 this represents input port while this first uh, variable or the number uh, represents the output port so what does it signify what does s12 signify s12 means if the incident wave impact on the port 2 while the reflected wave has been taken from the port 1 means the output is taken at the port 1 while the input is provided at the port 2 so uh, from this uh, in general equation i am just writing the value of b1 and b2 b1 means reflected wave from the port 1 and the reflected wave from the port 2 the reflected wave from the port 1 is due to the incident wave at the port 1 and in the incident wave at the port 2. If uh, we are providing uh, input at the port 1 and also at the uh, port 2 then what will the value of reflected wave at the port 1 that we have uh, written in this line in this equation b1 is basically the reflected wave from the port 1 due to the provided incident wave at a1 and a2 for the corresponding port 1 when we apply input at port 1 then we have written this s11 a1 s11 means input is provided at the port 1 and output is taken at the port 1 and this s12 has been written s12 means input is provided at the port 2 and the output is taken in the from the port 1 similarly uh, what b2 means b2 means the reflected wave at the port 2 when input is provided at the port 1 and also at the port 2 uh, this s21 uh, represents when uh, input is incident on the port 1 and output is taken from the port 2 while this s22 represents uh, when input is provided at the port 2 and the output is taken at the port 2 same port so this is a, a two equation we have we have found from this two port network uh, we have just uh, uh, write this equation into the matrix form so b1 and b2 reflected wave at the port 1 and the port 2 and this is scattering matrix and a1 and a2 are the incident wave at the port 1 and 2 this is the general matrix form s matrix so in general uh, what is uh, s matrix or uh, scattering parameter if uh, scattering par parameter sij s i subscript for the output j subscript for the input so it is represented as normalized reflected wave at the port i 
upon normalized incident wave at the jth port so it has been written that bi upon aj sij is equals to bi upon aj uh, if we want to represent this uh, uh, parameter in terms of voltage then it can be written as normalized reflected voltage wave can be given as reflected wave reflected voltage upon normalized impedance at the ith port uh, from the same uh, it can be written as normalized incident wave at the jth port can be written as aj is equals to v plus v plus means incident wave upon normalized impedance at the jth port uh, so by using the above concept uh, we have just written the s parameter s11 s11 means uh, if uh, incident uh, wave is incident on the port 1 and the reflected wave is taken from the port 1 so it has been written as b1 upon a1 and uh, b1 is the reflected wave at the port 1 so the normalized form is uh, this has been written in the form of voltages uh, reflected wave at port 1 upon normalized impedance at the port 1 same as this this is the incident wave at port 1 so uh, v1 plus uh, plus means forward wave minus means backward wave it, uh, this it represents basically a traveling wave uh, upon this z01 represents the impedance uh, normalized impedance at the port 1 similarly s12 s12 means uh, this uh, wave is incident on the port 2 and then the output is has been taken from the port 1 so this is b1 by a2 uh, then this is written in the form of the voltage this is the reflected wave is at the port 1 upon normalized impedance for the port 1 and the this is incident wave at port 2 this is a forward traveling wave upon normalized impedances so uh, similarly we have written this s21 and s22 uh, then we have got this three four equations from this S11, S12, S21 and S22. Uh, if the value of uh, intrinsic impedances at the port 1 and port 2 are equal, uh, then we got the following relationship. Then we got the following relation equation number 5. And if we have to calculate uh, the reflected wave at the port 1 and the reflected wave from the port 2, then uh, we got this final equation this represents the reflected wave at the port 1 this is a uh, reflected wave at the port 2 so we will uh, convert this equation into this and it is uh, we have written this in the matrix form this is known as a scattering matrix there are some properties of s matrix uh, the first property says that s matrix is a square matrix means the number of rows is equals to the number of column uh, second property says that a uh, network is referred as reciprocal if s is equals to the s transpose means the scattering matrix and its transpose are equal then the system is said to be a or the network is said to be a reciprocal the network is said to be lossless if s transpose in the multiplication with s uh, conjugate is equals to unitary matrix then the network is said to be reciprocal uh, if the network is lossless, then the real power delivered to the load or the network must be zero. Let us take an example of a two-port network. A uh, two-port network consists of two rows, two rows, two rows and two columns. Uh, S transpose of this matrix can be given by this equation, and uh, the conjugate of this S of this S matrix is given by this equation. For the lossless network, we have uh, seen that if this condition is satisfies, then the network is lossless. Uh, by putting the value of S matrix from the from this equation in this equation, uh, we have got the first equation by multiplying the first row of this first matrix and the first column of the second matrix. Then we got this equation by multiplying by taking the mod of this S11 s11 into s11 conjugate we have we have got the square of this s11 and uh, same as this s21 mod square uh, is equals to 1 
that, uh, that we have got from this by multiplying the first row and the first column then again by multiplying the first row and the second column we got this equation number 2 and by multiplying uh, second row of this matrix and first column of this matrix we have got the equation number 3 and uh, by multiplying this second row and the second column of this matrix we have got this equation so if we have to check the network is lossless or not then uh, you can easily put the value of s11 is square plus uh, s s21 is square if the value of uh, square of addition of these two elements is equals to one then you can say that system is lossless or network is lossless same as uh, if you put the value of s12 and s22 and square of uh, these two add, um, and by adding it is equals to one then this shows the network is uh, lossless. Thank you guys.